We were so concerned for a few days that this tournament is only heading in very fixed directions. But the story is changing. We had RCB winning. We have Gujarat winning. Seems a bit more exciting now. Yeah, from a neutral perspective, it is exciting. But uh, knowing the two of you all <laughs> and how much you love RCB, it's probably not exciting for you. We, we love a close fight. Well, we it's want time this to, to bring the, the calculator out because Delhi Capitals could have ensured their place in the playoff today. They haven't. Gujarat has won. So there is going to be this net run rate mathematics in play soon. Senior, I don't want us to start getting bashed for just bringing RCB up all the time. So we'll come to that later. <laughs> Uh, but Gujarat, uh, they've had so many changes and so much of it that we've argued about in past shows. Finally decided to have their two overseas openers together and uh, at least one of them fired. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Laura Wolfart was amongst the run. But I think between Dunkley and Wolfart, if we do not want one of them to open, it was Wolfart. I mean... The numbers, once again, they say that she's a fast starter in the middle order at 4 5. She has higher strike rates there. But Gujarat Giants probably liked what they saw of Wolfart in the Women's T20 World Cup and wanted her to open. Today was the day. It kind of paid off because the track was seemingly a bit slow. And her half century eventually, like, it, it added much more runs than those 147 otherwise show. But given the luck Gujarat has had with their openers, I think it worked out perfectly in, in some way. So the key was to have Dunkley and uh, Ulvard both. It couldn't have been one for one now. So that, that worked. Also, Ash Gardner, good, good numbers today. We spoke about how uh, the big money players were struggling except Nat Sivabrunt. And then she was like, wait, I will answer you all today. So, looking at Deepti Sharma and Smriti Mandana now to complete that quartet, getting into touch. Uh, and it was such a vital innings from Gardner. And, and lots of what we saw at the T20 World Cup where she was Australia's finisher mm -hmm. and which did prompt the kind of money she got at the auction, didn't it? Yeah, and this also tells us that it's not just the money that's uh, kind of putting a pressure on them. It's probably not the, nothing to do with pressure, her batting form, because she's still bowling well. Today was one of those knocks which came off because I think there was a point of time where she was struggling against Shikha Pandey's bowling, etc. But I think this was lovely to watch and this is why Ash Gardner rakes in the high amount, isn't it? And uh, 147, you know, when you just look at the scorecard, you'd see two batters with half centuries and the entire to total is just 147. That could confuse a few people, but uh, the tracks are slowing down and this was a successful target defence then. But you know what's really confusing me? and it's common to both these teams, they are carrying an 11th player. We've, you've, you've dug a bit into this, Sud, haven't you? Yeah, I think if we first talk about Delhi Capitals, they have Arundhati Reddy who really batted well today. It <laughs> was, was not a surprise because she has those batting abilities. India wanted her to do what Pooja Vastrakar was doing back then a couple of years ago. So, she, she, everybody knows she can bat and today she showed everybody again. But I think She's a bowling all-rounder and in the four matches that she's played, she's bowled only in two. And of course, she has, wasn't required up till today with the bat. So, it's a case of one bowler or one player too many and that perhaps lessens or you know reduces the batting lineup to an extent. But then Gujarat also have a player in Mansi Joshi, another India international who has been a pacer, pace bowling all-rounder. She's also not gotten her full quota of overs. So, it's, it's been that. Do you uh, think that, you know, this is a case of carrying a player and not, not somebody who has a set place in the 11 yet? I think it's a stronger case, in case, uh, a stronger case for Mansi Joshi to be, if we are talking there about replacements than Arundhati Reddy. Because uh, Mansi Joshi has uh, only one over today for 16 and they, they really are struggling with the batting Didn't department. Didn't bowl in the last game either. Yeah, and they, they'd probably have a good player in Harli Gala who's in recent times, you know, her uh, charts have gone up. So, in that, it's a more baffling choice. But Delhi Capitals, you think there's a replacement for Arundhati Reddy if, 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 if the, it's a, it makes for a case? Well, uh, Tara Norris, who didn't play today's game, is yeah. it seems like a, a good choice if they do want to play that extra spinner in, as they did today with Poonam Yadav. Uh, speaking of Delhi, we have to talk about how what happens when the top order didn't click. You dug in some numbers, Yash. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, right? If you look at their first four games, and in that, we're going to exclude Mumbai Indians. Everyone is exempted that game. Uh, you look at the other three games, they didn't lose a wicket. 
They scored tons of runs. One of them was that game where Shafali went crazy and they made 87. But in the last two games, while they've still scored more than 50, they lost two wickets the last time out. They lost three wickets today. That scoring rate is good, but for a team which we have identified from the start of this tournament does not have batting depth. Mm. You've got Jess Johnson already at six, feeling high, and then Tanya Bhatia at seven. Uh, you can't afford to be losing those many wickets right at the top. And that is perhaps one team which could do with uh, another batter, given that, yeah, like we spoke earlier about uh, Delhi Capitals actually following the England men's pattern of going hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. But where they differ from England men's side is the batting that uh, Delhi Capitals could do with one or two, at least one more power hitter. Because like you said, Jess Johnson at six is way too early. They do have players like Jasia Akhtar or uh, Laura Harris if you want to look overseas there. So, uh, strange in that sense. So being top heavy, you know, in T20 as always has its uh, drawbacks and you know, when so many days we were seeing Shafali, Meg Lanning, Jimmy, Mark up as and the top order, it's I think a good time for Delhi to sort of realize this as well. And if it brings Jasya Akhtar into the playing eleven, well, that's a massive bonus. Yeah, and they, let's put it in perspective. They don't need to be too worried. They are still yeah. in very comfortable position to be the second team qualifying. They do have eight points. Still have a couple of games left. One win we know will be enough to be right there in the eliminator. Uh, so yeah, Delhi can pick up the slack. Thanks for making it a little more interesting. <laughs>